Dear students, today we are going to learn about thermogrammetry. Thermogrammetry is a technique of thermal analysis. And what is thermal analysis? Actually, it's a, a type of a group of techniques in which different properties of samples are monitored against time or temperature. In this part, what we'll see about thermogravimetry, we'll see its introduction, we'll see its history, we'll learn about its definition, we'll see the TGA curve, we'll see the principle of the technique, and we'll see the schematic diagram of apparatus. So first of all, it's introduction. So measurement of mass is an experiment being performed since long in laboratory on the daily basis we are performing different experiments in which we have to measure the mass of our sample we are also performing the measurement of mass in different industries like food industry pharmaceuticals containers chemicals polymers in these industries the masses of food pharmaceutical items different containers they contain different products different chemicals and polymers so definitely there are products inside and uh, their masses are measured on daily basis so measurement of mass actually it provides the basis of gravi gravimetric analysis and what is gravimetric analysis actually it's a quantitative analysis and in this uh, analysis we may be interested in isolating the compound of our interest and weighing our uh, weighing the compound of our interest in pure form if we follow the effect of heat on changing of mass we may be able to extract different information about the sample and what does this means we have a sample and we are changing its temperature so we can extract different information about our sample now we'll see the history of thermogravimetry so here is uh, some main what do you say uh, scientists which make the history of thermogravimetry and these are Duval, Keach and Dolimore. For example, Honda in 1915 he used a lever arm balance fitted with an electrical furnace to study oxy salts. Means he was studying oxy salts and he used a conventional lever arm balance and that was fitted with electrical furnace to supply heat so he supplied heat to oxy salts and he noted the changes uh, which gone through by the supplying of heat then the Chavonard thermal balance first to record weight changes automatically using photographic method which was used by Duval in 1936 so do will first time use this balance then development of electronic microbalance allowed smaller samples and furnaces used in controlled atmosphere in vacuum so with the passage of time electronic microbalances were developed and what was the advantages of these microbalances that we can even use the samples which are present in very smaller quantities so we can study them by changing their temperature and even we can study them in controlled atmosphere means whatever type of atmosphere we want to study these samples so we can provide that atmosphere or even if we want to study them in vacuum so we can perform these experiments over there this technique is also known as thermogravimetric analysis TGA so the technique can both be used for qualitative and quantitative analysis mean whatever the sample we are you we are using in this technique we can tell what is present in our sample and in what quantity that is present 
And the final result which is obtained to us by thermogravimetric technique. So that is in the form of graph and that is called thermogravimetric curve. In, in, in order to enhance the steps in TG curve, the derivative thermogravimetric trace is frequently drawn. And what is DDG trace? Actually, it's a plot of rate of mass change with time, and we can call it dm by dt. So in the next slide, we actually I'm going to show you the T TG curve. So you can see clearly here are the two curves. So one is the solid one and other one is the dash one. The solid one shows the typical thermogravimetric curve, while the dash curve that shows derivative thermogravimetric curve. So next one is the principle of thermogravimetry. Usually we take sample in solid form. We supply heat to the furnace. So definitely there are changes in our sample and sample is converted into product by leaving out some gaseous product. Or there might be another case that we have our sample in solid state and we have provided some atmosphere maybe oxygen or air or nitrogen whatsoever then we supply heat and our sample is converted into product so both these processes can happen in this thermogravimetry normally it has been observed that this first one is more common now what happens actually we said that uh, when we supply heat to our sample so there is change in mass so why there is a change in mass and often the, there is the loss of mass so why there is a loss of mass the loss of mass is due to removal of water molecules which might be present in our sample or our sample may have some water of crystallization and when we supply heat so definitely there are the removal of water molecules by which the mass of the sample is decreased the passage of time. Here are two diagrams to explain the thermogravimetric process. In the left diagram, there is a burning match. Whenever we ignite a match, it gets fire. There come out some gaseous products which leave it and the mass of the match decreases with the passage of time. While in the right diagram, actually, this is the effect of heat on some polymer. So there are different steps you can see, one, two, three, four, five. In the first step, definitely there is some loss, loss of volatile components like moisture, solvents, etc. In the second step, there is the decomposition of polymer. So there's a decrease of mass. In the third step, we have changed the atmosphere. We switched the atmosphere from nitrogen to air. Now we have supplied air means oxygen in the atmosphere. In the fourth step, there's the combustion process. Means there are some organic compound and air is present there. So definitely there is combustion the carbon is converted into carbon dioxide and hydrogen is com converted into water. And the final step, which is the least in mass, definitely there is some inorganic residue, which is in the form of ash. Now we'll see the apparatus used for this technique. And the apparatus used in this technique is called thermobalance or thermogravimetric analyzer. And there are four major parts of this thermobalance. Number one, the electrobalance and its controller. Number two, the furnace and temperature sensors. Number three, the programmer or computer. Number four, the recorder or plotter. So here is the schematic diagram of thermobalance system. 
So you can see right in the middle there is a sample pen where we can put our sample and it is directly attached to electrobalance and electrobalance is attached to balance control unit okay then there is furnace here you can see furnace which is used to provide temperature and this furnace is attached to the programmer i mean the temperature is properly programmed and here is the atmosphere which is maintained here so for maintenance of the atmosphere we can put uh, inside here some gas or even if we want to study all the process in the vacuum so we can uh, expel out all the gases through this pan so to measure the temperature there are sensors and there are the thermocouples for this purpose and they measure the temperature and then there is the recorder which uh, give us the final result in the form of thermogrammetric curve So here is another schematic diagram of TGA analyzer. So the furnace is here placed right in the middle. The balance cell is placed here on the right side. The support for sample cell is present here right in the middle. And this is the horizontal design of TGA analyzer and this horizontal design actually it helps to minimize the possible turbulence which may be due to the purge gas flow the furnace gas temperature is controlled by using the temperature sensors here located right below the furnace furnace is shielded on the both sides this one and this one and the shield is done by using baffles. The volatile and gaseous combustion product leave the furnace tr through this left hole. This is the gas outlet. And if we want to analyze these volatile and gaseous combustion product, we can also do this uh, by using technique which is called evolved gas analysis.